we shall overcome by Bishop Paul Morton. Yes, we shall overcome. Why? Because Jesus Christ has four principalities and powers. And he made a show of them openly, and he triumphed over every one of them in it. Well, God bless every one of you that honor the sound of my voice. Certainly, this is a wonderful time of being able to bring to you truths, the Word of God, that will build us all up and give us an inheritance among those who are sanctified. We're living in very, very serious times. It is time, as never before, for the people of God to call on God. The Bible said, call on me in the day of trouble. And he said, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. This is what the Lord has said. And certainly this is a time where prayer and fasting is in order and very, very necessary. The United States has shifted from being government-wise a God-fearing nation to a nation that has shifted in their allegiance. Uh, well, we know the allegiance that people have, amen, in times past pledged they say that I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, meaning that they <clears throat> pledge their allegiance to this nation, amen, and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, and uh, in time it was added, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now there is a time that justice needs to be served. Justice. Justice for the unborn. Millions have died at the hands of those who are very, very loyal to the spirit of Baal. Yes, the God, the same idolatrous God who was in power and in force during the prophet Elijah's time. Elijah was raised up to confront the earthly uh, person who was used mightily concerning the God of Baal. And that person was Je Jezebel. Yes, Jezebel was used mightily. She killed f prophets of God, hundreds of them. And also there were others, other prophets, who were not fed any longer by her means. And... uh those prophets were fed by another person who st stepped in to see to it that at least they had bread and water. They had to hide because Jezebel was on the rampage to kill the prophets of God. 
We're living in such a time that suffering will and has confronted those who take a stand with the God of creation. And it's going to grow as we get closer to the takeover of the Antichrist in this time, in this season that the earth is going fastly toward uh, the great tribulation and uh, the even the second coming of the Lord Jesus to reign on earth. Well, the turn up of worship Bell worship will, in yes, it's going to happen the more and the more. And that's going to make our light needed. Jesus said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So therefore, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ is going to be much needed. Now, how and from what source does the light shine? Not by ComEd or any of the other uh, light companies that furnish, super, I would say, uh, physical light. But it's talking about the Word of God. That the Word of God is going to have to go forth. Giving understanding and giving Amen. The direction, the direction that people need to go, that people need to make a decision, amen, in behalf of life. Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. When babies are aborted, listen, that is... Lucifer coming against the kingdom of God. Babies being born have the position of the possibility of being able to be a part of the kingdom of God. But if they are not living, thriving people, they do not have that opportunity, even though that they are in the presence of the Lord. But so far as being able to function as a person in the kingdom of God, that is no longer possible. So what is it? Lucifer exalted himself through the decision that was made in 1973, I believe it was, that babies could be aborted legally. That emboldened people to physically and legally and in hospitals, clinics, and other places, facilities where they provide abortion that emboldened them to do it. Then something happened. People began to understand and realize. There were people that realized that there was a mistake made. And so Roe versus Wade has been overturned. And now, as never before, we are at war with Lucifer. One of his hits was recently a great champion of life was just totally inundated by accusation. And so he removed himself from one of the prime positions that has supported pro-life down through the years. So that means that the people of God, we must turn it up. Eugenics is thriving and it is in power. It is in power, eugenics. Eugenics is population control and there are different times that 
uh, there have been presentations to define what eugenics is and what it is doing. Amen. God has used this ministry to do that. And now here we are confronted with a time where there's going to be great opposition against pro-life. And as the opposition rises the more against pro-life, amen, that means that somebody is going to have to step up. There has to be a movement, amen, that will stand for life. Number one, the people of God that are followers of Jesus Christ, we must be in that number to stand for life. Jesus said, I'm going to repeat it again. He said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So every person that is in the kingdom of God alive we are to be pro-life. Now, that doesn't mean that every woman, uh, when there's some situation uh, that is in her body that threatens her life, there are times when those people, yes, they may have to succumb to a abortion or an abortion. But on a whole, most abortions are not to save the woman's life. There are many abortions that came to save people's lifestyle that they have enjoyed without the interruption of having to take care of a baby. So, amen, as we go on now with one of the champions, amen, not being in place, so that means that those that have the understanding, those that have the wisdom, those that have the power, those that have the authority in the earth realm, we must do, amen, and we must stand. And the Bible has said and done all to stand, to stand. As we go off today, I'm going to pray. We want to pray, number one, that God will give us the power that it takes to stand. Because don't fool yourself. Satan is going to turn it up against pro-life. And every person that is pro-life. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, release your power. And we decree today that your strength would be upon your people everywhere, and particularly those that are opening their mouths, crying aloud, sparing not, concerning abortion. Lord, we loose the Spirit of God as never before to strengthen us and to grant unto us boldness that we need in order to do your will. You see the powers of darkness that are entrenched against us. We loose your angels now. God, we call on your angels in the name of Jesus. Your angels, Lord. You said the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear you to deliver. God, we lose your angels. I lose your angel in this house where I am. I lose your angel in my surrounding. I lose your angel, O oh God, as I go in the name of Jesus to accompany me. In the name of Jesus, your spirit of might. Hey, I lose your angel. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we'll give you the glory. And we will say you have done it. Now, Lord, those that are listening that may not have completely surrendered to you, God, I lose your power that they will, oh God, come under conviction and repent of their sins. In the name of Jesus, and we'll praise you for the victory. Amen. Now, beloved, stay encouraged. Amen. Do what God would have you to do. Wonderful Jesus. And pray. Pray for me. Pray for yourself. Pray for the body of Christ. 
Amen. And God will give us strength to go forward, to drive and go forward in Jesus' name. Bless you now. Love you.